Good Wednesday afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is Pastor David, and I'm announcing that for the next three weeks, Woodbury United Methodist Church will be holding our worship services virtually only, without a congregation gathered in the sanctuary or sitting in the pews. That will be beginning this Sunday, November 29th, and continuing for December 6th and December 13th. As we near the end of that time, we will reevaluate our situation and make a decision going forward for what our worship will look like. Our services will be live streamed beginning at 11 a.m. each Sunday morning, and they will look much like what they have in recent weeks. We'll still include music, prayer, testimony, scripture reading, preaching, all of these elements of our life together and our worship together will be a part of the service. The main difference will be that people will not be sitting in the pews as we do these things. That will be at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And earlier, you can also join in Brother Charlie's Sunday School class, which we will be streaming beginning at 10 a.m. till about 10.30 on Sunday mornings. So 10 to 10.30, Sunday School, and then beginning at 11 o'clock, our worship service. I invite you to join and participate in both of these, that we can worship together, even if virtually, in this time. We are doing this as what we believe to be a faithful response to the rapid spread and the threat of coronavirus in this time. By every statistical measure, the raw number of cases, the positive test, uh, positive test result percentage, the number of deaths, and especially the number of hospital beds, we have seen all of those numbers going in a bad direction in recent weeks. The number of ICU beds we had, they were about 50% full just a month, month and a half ago, and now we've reached almost 90% full just these few weeks later. That is a very rapid and significant change, and we wish to do everything in our power to move that tide and push it in the other direction. So that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid a virus that is easily communicable and very dangerous for some people and many people who contract it. What we wish to do this for is for one another and for ourselves to keep us healthy and to keep us well, that we as a body would be strong and healthy as the body of Christ, and especially in this congregation of First United Methodist Woodbury. We are also doing this for the benefit of our neighbors, for Woodbury and Cannon County, because we know it's our community and communities much like ours around the state and the country where this virus is spreading the most quickly and doing the most damage at this present moment. We are at risk in this community and we wish to do everything we can to care for our neighbors and to love them by not making them sick. We also wish to do this for the benefit of healthcare workers. Healthcare workers have been stretched thin for some time now and at this point are reaching a very critical stage where many are already working extended hours, others will be asked to do so in the coming weeks, and some are even going to be required to be quarantined away from their family for an extended period of time. We do not wish that to be the stage that we are in, and we wish to do what we can to care for those who have cared for us by looking after our health for so many years, and especially in this year, which has been such a strange one. We care about our nurses and our doctors and other healthcare workers, and so we, we want to do what we can to protect them as they care for us. We also wish to protect our own ability to hold our mobile food pantry on December 19th. While that will be more difficult than normal to carry off this year, uh, regardless of, of what we're doing as in our worship, we know that if we were to have an outbreak in our congregation and have multiple positive cases within the congregation, that would render it possibly impossible uh, for us to hold that event on December 19th. We care about that event and loving our neighbors in that way, and so we wish to do what we can to protect our ability to hold that event. Next, I urge you all to take precautions, not simply in what we're doing as a congregation by not gathering for Sunday morning worship, but I also urge you in your day-to-day -day life, wear masks in situations where it's required. It might not be comfortable, it might be inconvenient, but it's a minor thing and it can benefit others. And so I invite you and encourage you to take that step. Avoid large crowds where it's not necessary. Avoid trips out of the house that aren't necessary or going to stores and places when you don't need to. Just limit those trips, do what you can to care for our, for our neighbors and follow the guidance that we're being given in these days. Even organizations like a group of evangelical medical professionals, the CMDA, has been calling for people to take precautions and calling for churches to take similar steps to what we're doing right now. And so at the behest 
of those uh, medical workers that we care about and love and trust, I invite you to take these steps along with me. Lastly, pray. Pray for the, our church, pray for one another, and pray for our community and our world as we respond to this virus and as countries all around the world respond to this. Pray. Pray for God's blessing and God's protection. And I invite you to do that with me now. And before we turn into prayer, I want to read this passage from 1 Corinthians 12 to remind us of who we are. We know that our world has become a very individualistic place and even a selfish place for many people. But we as a church are called to be something different. We are something different. We are members of one another in the body of Christ. And so hear this word from 1 Corinthians 12 as Paul describes us as the body of Christ. There are many parts, but one body. The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Or in turn, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Instead, the parts of the body that people think are the weakest are actually the most necessary. The parts of the body we think are less honorable are the ones that we honor the most. The private parts of our body that aren't presentable are the ones given the most dignity. The parts of our body that are presentable don't need this, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the part with less honor, so that there won't be division in the body, and so the parts might have mutual concern for one another. If, each, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it, and if one part gets glory, all the parts celebrate with it. You are the body of Christ, and you are parts of one another. You are the body of Christ, and you are parts of one another. And so I invite you and encourage you and urge you to care for the other parts of our body by taking precautions that perhaps aren't even necessary for yourself, but are necessary for those other parts. Look out for your brothers and sisters in Christ and do what you can to care for them. And above all, and in all, and through all things, pray. And join me in prayer right now as we pray for our church, for our neighbors, and for our world. And uh, I invite you to join with me in these prayers. As I speak prayers aloud, just join in with me. Lift up your own particular needs and concerns to the Lord and follow along with me as I lead us in prayer. God, our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, come now and fill this congregation. Fill us up with your presence and draw us closer and closer to you. Lord, even as we are each slightly physically distant from one another, draw us closer to one another by drawing us close to yourself. Fill us with your goodness. Come, Holy Spirit, and may we be people marked by your love and your joy and your peace. All of your character, Lord, may it show forth in us. We pray these things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray for this community, for Woodbury, for Cannon County, and all of Middle Tennessee. We pray that this would be a place marked by the service of neighbor to neighbor, by, one and, by each person looking out for each other. And God, bless us. Protect us in this time. We're being hit in a lot of ways, financially, our health. Lord, we are being hit, and we pray that you would protect us and build us back up and renew us, Lord, in your name and with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray for those who are sick in this time, whether with coronavirus or any one of any many other diseases, Lord. We pray your blessing upon those who are sick, and especially those who are feeling discouraged in this time, God. Encourage them. Lord, restore our bodies and our spirits and our minds. And Lord, for those loved ones who are caring for loved ones who are sick, I pray for your special encouragement and filling of them. Lord, may they be rewarded for their faithful service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, for those who are at risk of contracting the coronavirus, whether with underlying health conditions, Lord, or perhaps by the place that they live, living in a nursing home, living in a prison, living in other institutions of long-term care, we lift up those who are most vulnerable in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, those whose work brings them into contact with many and whose work involves serving many, Lord, for retail workers in this holiday season and for medical professionals who are looking after us, we pray your blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our hearts. 
that they would be strong, that they would be steadfast. Lord, make us faithful servants and make us more like you in this time. Let our hearts not be overly troubled, but Lord, let them only be troubled for the benefit of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray not just for our church, not our congregation only, but for the church here and around the world. May we be leaders in the world in this time. May we show the world what love looks like and what the service of other looks like. In this individualistic and selfish world, may we be a body, may we be a family, and we, may we show what looking for others as much as ourself looks like. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, I invite you to close this prayer by joining with me in saying the prayer together that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has taught us. And if you've learned this prayer with different phrasing or in a different language, I invite you to pray that as you have learned it. But join with me now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, even as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining with me in prayer. Thank you for being a part of this great and wonderful body of Christ with me. It literally would not be the same without you. It is good to join with you and with Christ and with the whole company, the cloud of witnesses that surrounds us. We join and we draw near the throne of God together. May God draw us close together in this time. And I say to you as well, happy Thanksgiving. As some of you may have the smell of a feast for tomorrow already filling your kitchen or your home, I pray, whether that is the case for you or not, that this year each one of us would be filled with God's blessings that our hearts would be encouraged and that we would have gratitude before God, our Father, who gives us so many good gifts. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go and be blessed. Amen.